Good morning everyone, welcome back to Backbone Exotics. In today's video, I'll show you how to make this look like this beautiful naturalistic vivarium. So keep watching. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna need is an enclosure. It can be anything. In my case, it's just an old fish tank that I had in the garage just collecting dust, so I thought I'd put it to use. It could also be a storage bin, or it could be a mason jar, a water bottle. Literally, it can be anything as long as it holds in substrate, and preferably that it's clear. That way, you could actually see what you're, you know, what you made. And it could also allow sunlight to go in. That way, your plants can survive longer. Also, you'll need other things such as a container to hold in your isopods. You'll also need uh, charcoal. This has to be all natural and lump charcoal. That way it's actually safe for what's actually going into your vivarium. You're also gonna need rocks. This can be any sort of rocks. You can literally just go outside and pick up rocks, but they have to be sanitized. The best way to do it is to boil them in, you know, obviously boiling water for 30 minutes to up to an hour. You could also bake them, but it's much quicker and you can get more done by simply boiling it. You're also gonna need a husk from a palm tree preferably these fibrous ones because that will allow your isopods to to eat them and this lasts the longest after that it's going to be uh all up to you you have to get creative you could use rocks to decorate it moss plants preferably smaller ones that you know won't overgrow your your terrarium it also really depends how big your terrarium is like you could literally just use this obviously this is smaller, so you need smaller plants, but because this one's bigger, I can go for something bigger, such as pothos and stuff. You're also gonna need some bioactive soil, and you can find a link to how I make mine here. Also, while talking about sanitizing the rocks, I forgot to mention, you should also sanitize anything that you grab from the outside, such as this cocoa husk that I harvested from my neighbor's yard. And you need to sanitize it because since this is just out in the wild, there can be a lot of parasites on it and microorganisms that can be harmful to your isopods and also to your terrarium plants. So, like I said, the first thing you should do is start, you know, sterilizing this because it's going to take the longest. Like I said, it's going to take up to an hour. So that's the first thing I'm going to show you guys. Okay, so before putting it in the oven, it's best if you put them in trays because if you directly put them on like the, the racks, it's really easy for them to catch on fire, especially like these fiber ones. They could accidentally, you know, hang over and actually touch like where the heat comes from and catch on fire. And for the temperatures on these ones, you can go from 250 degrees to 300 degrees. I'm personally doing 300 degrees because it could be done in within 30 minutes. But I'm going to take the best, like the longer route and actually do it for 45 minutes. And the absolute longest that you want to leave it in here is up to an hour. And that way you'll make sure 100% that all the bacteria and stuff on here are completely dead. Okay, so next what you want to do is sterilize your, your enclosure. I already did that off camera, but you can use things like F10, Off-White, or even just regular old uh, rubbing alcohol. After that, what we want to do is add our drainage layer, and that's the purpose that these rocks do. So depending on the size of your enclosure is how much rocks you're going to put. This one's a bit bigger, so I can go for for more drainage later. So now I'm just gonna quickly pour the rocks in here. Get the bag. You wanna even this out. That should be fine. It's about half an inch, I'd say. And that's how I like it. So after that, you wanna get your, your charcoal. And this is really, really messy. You're gonna get absolutely stained. So it's not really smart for me to be wearing a white shirt. So I'd really advise you to, you know, watch what you're wearing and also, you know, wear gloves because you're gonna get your hands absolutely stained if you handle this. So I'm just gonna try my best to not touch it. The reason why you use charcoal is because um, it's, it like serves as a natural filtration. That way when the water goes through your substrate, and then it hits your charcoal, it starts filtrating, and that way, if there is like accumulation of water at the very bottom of your drainage layer, it's not gonna smell bad, and it's not gonna, you know, begin to produce algae, and algae is usually what, you know, gets those bad odors. So it's really, really crucial, don't skip this step. And by adding uh, charcoal, it also 
gives you like space between your drainage layer and your actual substrate so you know the rocks won't mix with the dirt it's very important because if you don't do that then there's really no point in using a drainage layer and maybe even wearing a mask is smart as you can see look at all this black smoke and that should be good enough should look something like that you shouldn't really be able to see much rocks poking through it maybe on camera you can see one right there but that should be fine next you'll need your bioactive soil so go ahead and just toss that in there and you really want to go pretty thick with this actually because um you want to get be able to give your your plants enough space for them to actually root so you want to be generous on how much you pour don't forget to keep compacting because you know this this substrate's really fluffy so it'll, it may seem like you're putting a lot even though you're really not and by giving it a thick uh, substrate you're also going to allow for your isopods and your uh, springtails to make like houses make a bunch of colonies inside their inside the substrate that's going to give you a productive you know reproduction so that's what i'm looking for personally because i want to breed more isopods to give in my other bioactive enclosures and instead of just you know tossing a bunch of isopods in here i thought i'd make it pretty so that's why i'm making this vivarium I'd say, depending on the size of your enclosure, of course, you'd want to give your uh, substrate to be, um, I don't know, something like an inch to an inch and a half, even up to two inches. The more, the better, of course. Now that all your wood is sterilized, including all your acorns, and you see I have some more wood over here, you also want to sterilize your, your, uh, your plants. Like, you want to take out all the old dirt off of it including your moss and everything but that's for another video i'll be sure to show you guys how to properly you know sterilize your plants and your moss for your enclosures now you just want to decorate it and this is where you get creative you can use anything you want you can literally go outside go on a hike and just if you find a leaf that you like pick it up sterilize it and you can use it in your enclosure like i said i went on a walk with my dogs and i found this acorn so that's why i'm using it it looks very pretty and yeah let's get into making this All right, now that that's done, we're gonna catch our isopods. And you can go outside, go to a park in your backyard, anywhere, just look for leaf litter and you should be able to find a bunch of isopods. But I'm not gonna go outside and, you know, dig around. You also wanna be careful that you're in areas that don't use pesticides because you know, that's obviously bad, especially if you're gonna introduce those same isopods to your new reptiles, just like I am. So I'm just going to harvest a few from my Snake Maui's enclosure because there's there's a lot in here. So I'm going to start digging around in her substrate and looking for them. As you can see, there's a bunch of isopods absolutely everywhere. And don't worry, guys. She does have a uh, water dish in here, but we took it out for the purposes of this video because it takes a lot of space. And it's going to be really hard to, you know, jam my hands in here with the cup and the camera. But like I said, look, there's one right here. Just want to pick them up. As you can see. And just toss it in here. Okay, and now once this is full, we're just going to cut to the next clip. And this that's when you're going to see me pouring these isopods into the vivarium. So I just flipped the log and look how much isopods there's in here. Jesus. Like I said, there's a lot in here. So if I take out a couple, if I harvest a few... There won't be a big difference in here anyway so let me just grab a few of these whoa they're going absolutely everywhere there's one okay so these are all the isopods that i collected the majority of, of them are just the the powder oranges i do have one armadillium maculatum that i want to breed but i couldn't find more of them so i'm just gonna have to dig around in her substrate and hopefully find some more some more so they could actually breed but that's pretty much it look 
hopefully the camera can pick up their colors, but they're very, very bright. Bright orange and the zebra color on that armor dealing make a lot of them look really nice. Okay, so now that our enclosure is all decorated, we just want to do the final touches, which is in introducing our springtails. Springtails are very crucial and very uh, important to have in your enclosure because they prevent mold and funguses from, you know, actually growing in here. Especially because we're going to be misting this down daily for the requirements of our isopods. If you just simply just spray, 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 there's just going to be a point where mold and some nasty stuff starts growing in here. And without the springtails, it will just overtake your whole enclosure and, you know, you're just going to end up having to toss it away because it'll start smelling bad, it'll look ugly, etc. Okay, so now I'm just going to gently pour them in there. You could also blow on them and they'll, like, usually, like, stimulate them to jump. Whoa. They're going absolutely everywhere. I'm just going to get this big part piece of charcoal as you can see i'm not sure if you can see them on camera but there's a bunch of them on there now i'm just gonna put it down in there and blow and just rinse and repeat i'm gonna try to get a bunch on here again look at them on there and blow now that it's full of springtails we're just gonna introduce our isopods we're just gonna Toss them in there. Boop, 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 boop. Now that that's all of them, as you can see, they're scattering everywhere. The important thing is that you want to give them like wood too. Also with like your um, palm tree like husk, you also want to give them give them wood because they they absolutely love it, and that's where they mostly set up their colonies. That's why I'm. I've heard like in the eastern states and even in southern states, uh, they call them wood lice. Up here, like in northern California, we usually just know these as roly polies. Now to maintain your colony, you just want to simply mist down the enclosure, depending on the isopods that you have in here. And also, like if you start seeing your, your plants getting all droopy. And just so you know, it is normal if your plants do get a little bit, you know, ugly after the first even up to two weeks after you plant it in because they are going to go into a shock because the substrate's all new there's barely any nutrients in there but that's why we have the isopods they're going to break down our uh, leaves and stuff that i have inside my bioactive soil and my bioactive soil is perfect because of that it has it has a bunch of like leaves and other stuff that the isopods will eat so i'll leave a link to it somewhere right here but you also want to give them fish food like fish flake food this has a bunch of protein in it and that's what's going to allow your isopods to like be able to re reproduce like more frequently and they're they'll be able to give like a bunch more babies like bigger litters Another great tip is that you want to leave like an open spot in the terrarium. That way you can get up close and tap, 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 tap. And that should be enough for the isopods that we have in there. Obviously, the more isopods, the more food you want to put in there. And I wouldn't overdo the, the fish food. You usually just do this maybe once a week, once every week. It really depends on the soil that you use, but... Because my soil is really, really well made. It doesn't, you don't have to do this so often because there's a bunch of food, including the, the husk and I have magnolia leaves in here. Okay, so now that this is done, I hope you guys like it. I mean, it's super easy. And like I said, throughout the whole video, you can get as creative as you want. You can use whatever you want. And, you know, as long as it's safe to be inside the enclosure. But that's pretty much it. If you like this video, please sure to make, leave a like and comment if you're going to do this. And don't forget to subscribe while you're at it. And I, I want to see you guys, how creative you guys can get and how beautiful you guys can make a vivarium. So please make sure you send me a DM or tag me on one of your posts on Instagram at Backbone Exotics. See you guys next time.